As you know, this is I Do, I Did, I Don't, uh, the What's In It for the Black People Media. Start our way into this journey of divorce and healing. So we came together under a survival mentality, not under a friendship of being in love. First, being friends and then being in love or growing in love. We came together under, we're trying to survive, we're two kids trying to survive. Okay, we're going to survive together because if you're handling this end of the survival and I'm handling this end, years that you've accepted this, this is what it's been and now you've made this decision and he just, he wasn't there. He wasn't even seeing that you were done. Here's what it was. Just like I ignored on the front end that he didn't love me like that. He was so disconnected from me by the point when I decided to leave that he didn't see the writing on the wall. Wow. He just didn't see it. But he didn't know that one because he never took the time to meet her. Mm -hmm. And so you created your plan and um, and that's key, I think, in having a plan. If you are going to, whether whether you're deciding together that this isn't going to work any longer and we're splitting and having a plan on how you're going to move forward is pretty key. You knew at this point I had to create my own, your own plan and you were moving forward with that. In my case, I didn't have a plan. Things happened pretty abruptly and I was creating a plan on the fly <laughs> along the way. I don't recommend that. You forgive yourself. You forgive you. Do the work of forgiving yourself that you may be able to actually forgive others. Rogers, let me ask a question. Do either that son or your grandson smell like transmission fluid? We trying to find Ruthie a husband. You funny man. We try to find Ruthie, huh? We try to find Ruthie, huh? You heard that good, what, Let me ask you, Rogers, what does Ruthie need to do to find her husband? I listen to her, I listen to her little voice. I like that little passive voice she got. <laughs> hey, she's she say, like, I should I know you kind of small, ain't you? <laughs> Ruth, she said you got a pension? Huh? She said no, you got a pension. I'm, I'm, I'm coming down to the, where you on stage is located? Where y'all Ruth, uh, we down here in Bronzeville. Look, this is what we gonna do. We gonna get you, we gonna do a love connection off the line. Rogers, I wanna tell you, man, thank you so much for calling. You, you all downtown somewhere? Yeah, we downtown. Uh, Ruth, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put Ruth. I talking about the I'm, matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the address. I'm gonna come into the old station one morning. Uh, we gonna have you come down. We gonna have you and Ruthie, and we gonna have you sit right I'm an early bird anyway. Ruthie, you can be the grandma, the great grandmama <laughs> of over 110 I children. I love big family. You know what I'm saying? 110. <laughs> The Chicago Legal Network is the collaboration of attorneys that concentrate in many areas of the law most needed in Chicago neighborhoods. The CLN lawyers focus on personal injury, criminal defense, and other issues. The CLN lawyers all average over 20 years of legal experience and are dedicated to helping the Chicago community. The Chicago Legal Network is committed to developing black lawyers through mentorship and co-representation. So if you were injured in a car accident, slip and fall, or injured on the job, or you need assistance with criminal defense, including driving violations and DUI, check out out chicagolegalnetwork.com for more information or call 773-912-3545 773-912-3545 hey chicago you know we've all been impacted by covid especially in our communities help protect chicago we need everyone to stay safe and get the facts about the covid19 vaccine visit the what's in it for the black people media facebook page and www.chicago.gov slash covid vax for the facts I, Emmanuel Chris Welch, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. I ain't gonna hold the fact that he's an alpha against them. I'm not gonna hold the fact he came on my show with this Northwestern, but we made black history. The Illinois Speaker of the House. Mr. Emmanuel Chris Welch. Mr. Speaker, welcome 
to What's In It For The Black People Media. How are you today and how does it feel to be one of the most powerful men in the state of Illinois? I couldn't miss this opportunity to come on your show and talk about this historic moment. I've recognized exactly what this means for our people. And it was black people uniting, women in our caucus kicked the door down. They kicked it down, but black people uh, united and walked right through the door. In my governing, I think it's realistic for people to expect us to continue to pursue some important legislation that's going to impact black communities, because that's been my entire career. I look at uh, things through an equity lens, a racial lens, specifically a black lens. And now that we're at the head of the table, we're going to make sure that our communities receive the much needed resources that they need. How do we actually get to participate now? People may doubt what you say, but they believe what you do. And I'm in a position for the first time in the history of this state to help our community. And I want you to take a look at my actions and over the course of the next few months and see the answer to that very question. Want to see what's in it for the black people? Watch my actions. I must thank 22 strong people for insisting that that happen. Please acknowledge, respect, and thank the members of the Illinois House Black Caucus. Let's give them a round of applause. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-M. Yes, yes, yes. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. What's up? What's happening? What's popping? Habari Ghani Hotel. You are in the right place, family. If you hear my voice, you, by God's, by God's grace, will be blessed today. Because I am blessed to have you listening. So I hope that you will be blessed by hearing me today. This is Tori Muhammad, and you are listening to the Tori Muhammad Show. We are here at What's In It For The Black People Media. We are so excited. We are so um, pleased and engaged and happy to be seeing you all today. And we're hoping that your day is as blessed as it should be. Because you know what? You are on the top side of the earth today. You woke up today and you are in a position and a chance to enjoy life. Now, I know, I know what's going on right now outside. But you know what? Yesterday brought out the child in me. I hear you. I hear two Tories. Hey, man. Well, one Tory. <laughs> if there's anything better than one Tory, it's two Tories. <laughs> okay, where are you hearing me? Okay, you don't hear me anymore. But one time, one time. So, um, yesterday, man, people were complaining. You know, people were putting stuff on social media. People were outside fussing. You know, you know, some of the brothers and some of the sisters were out there holding it back to one side as they were shoveling the snow. I know it was rough out there, but you know what? It was heavy. But you know what? That was perfect snowball snow. It's still a good snowball throwing snow. And I'm telling you, if it was not for me being taught to never be the aggressor, somebody needs to think the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and the training I got in the Nation of Islam because we're taught to never be the aggressor. But there were some moments where I just wanted to just just, just throw something into a crowd, throw something at somebody that was shoveling and hit somebody. (laughs) 
The 10 year old in me was fighting to come out, <laughs> but I didn't do it. So um, there we have it. Nobody got hurt and nobody came after me. No wars, no snowball wars, but I know there were some children out there somewhere having some fun wars, some snowball throwing fights. And um, man, that's just the way it is. But you know what, brothers and sisters? For those people that complain, and I can't wait for the day. We got a great show, and I'm about to bring in our co-host for the day in just a second. But I have to share this with you all, right? So some people complain about the winter. They complain every year. We complain about how rough it is, how cold it is, how much snow it is. Sometimes it may be more snow than others. But the thing about it is that there is some beautiful principles in there if you understand what is happening. See, some of us enjoy the summer we enjoy the spring but we complain about the fall and the winter and what will we do what will we have if we didn't have any changing of the seasons right the changes of the seasons are a reminder of the cycles of life that we all go through both physically and then also spiritually and mentally right so check this out you have the springtime right that's re- that's birth then you have summer which is living Then you have fall, which is a decline, and then you have winter, which is hibernation or death, right? But then every year, everything is reborn again. And because it is taken away from us for a moment, we appreciate the flowers more. We appreciate the great weather more. And nobody knows that as much as Chicago because of the extremes that we go through with our weather here, right? So when we look at ourselves, Right. When we look at our life, everybody goes through the various um, cycles of life. Now, of course, we know we're all born, then we exist, then we decline and then we die. And then if we have done something of significance with our families or with the community, we live on beyond um, our physical death. Right. But then also you have this situation in your every day struggles right some people are on top for a while then they they hit some struggles and their money goes down or their you know uh their relationship goes down right things happen and you know you're not in the summer all the time right you can have a death of a business you can have the death of a relationship uh the you know your the loved one your spouse passes on they move on uh to another plane of existence or you know, sometimes then you both of you all move to another plane of existence in a divorce or whatever it is, right? But because you don't control the weather, right, all you can do is understand the principles behind it and enjoy that, right? And so, but you can control the weather of your own life. You can control the and how you deal with the challenges and the seasons of life. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said we all go through the vicissitudes, the changes of life. And sometimes you have to be careful. Not sometimes, all the time. You should be careful how you judge someone who's going through a winter in their life because summer is just around the corner. But just be rest assured that it's just as, just as certain as night, as day follows night, after difficulty comes eve. So don't be so upset about the winter, but enjoy the blessings of it and understand that it's just a hibernation moment. And resurrection, the new life is coming real soon. So that's my thoughts for the day. I was thinking about that this morning. I want to share that with you. And, uh, man, we're so excited to have our co-host with us. We have Linda Perez. How you doing? Good morning, Tori. I'm doing great. I'm feeling good. Um... I, I love the snow. I just don't like the coldness, but I, I love the snow. I'm a kid. Um, so touching back with the snow, it was like after I saw other kids on Facebook going sledding, I was like, I told the kids, I'm like, we have sledders in the garage that we never used because we never had this much snow um, in the last couple of years. <laughs> and so they was like, can we go tomorrow? I'm like, it's a school day. Sorry. I got saved. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not <laughs> happening today, huh? But um, yep, that's what it is. So uh, we have a guest coming up in just a second, but you have to give us an update. You know, of course, now, I don't know, this must this must going to be a, a regular segment on the Tori Muhammad Show, but we get an update on Sissy's Taco Bar. You have some fantastic news to share. Tell us about it. Um, so <clears throat> I know we mentioned it Friday. Um, 
we were looking for our spot. We were looking to collaborate with another business. So we had our last final meeting with um, Darnell with the Woodlawn on 79th and Woodlawn. So we'll be in that location February. I'm looking at February 16th because we're still waiting on the city. Um, so hopefully um, it could be sooner, but to be safe, February 16th. Uh, we have added days. We'll be there on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Our new hours will be from 12 o'clock to 7 p.m. So I'm excited. Um, we're still in the community and he's a great person to work with and I love his place. Anyways, um, just the whole zombie look, the feeling, and I wanted the place where I can um, make sure my cu customers feel comfortable and safe as well but they enjoy coming to a great establishment as well. Um, so we're working, we're, we're talking about collaborating, cross promoting. So I'm excited, Tori. Man, that is so excited. And we are, you know, yeah, to go to applause. Go ahead, go ahead, Sonia Escobar with the applause. Right. <laughs> and also, you know she's a fan. Tori, she <clears throat> we um, are adding the Cajun Jack to our menu, but we also have the, the vegan chorizo taco that we added. Um, last night I was experiencing with cactus. Um, I love no me and my kids, they demolished those cactus tacos. Um, so we're coming out with another vegan taco. We're going to do like, um, like we did at Maeve's Deli where we invited people out to try the vegan taco to see if they want it on the menu. But if my kids ate those cact cactus tacos, they were like demolished in like right. 10 minutes. Did you hear Sonia? You hear how she pronounced it? Say yes. it again, What Sonya? did she say? Oh, no pal. You say no palace. Yes. No palace. Yes. I yes. No palace. Yes. yes. Right. We and that's, that. that's going to be it. the name of it because you just can't that's tell the name of it. cactus. It's crispy. Yes. And that's the I'm name of it. It's going to have fish bones in it. <laughs> no. And it was delicious. So you bake it. You bait it. Um, it. It was delicious. And you just add, um, I made like a, a homemade cilantro avocado sauce to go on top of it. And it was just mm. delicious. Man, I yep. can't wait to taste it. I'm looking forward to tasting. I heard it was good. I heard the the raving of of your nephews about yeah. it. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes, man. So look, we have a first of all, it's Black History Month. Now you know there. You know, of course, we know that every day should be a day to celebrate your history. But because this month has been set aside, shout out to our uh, brother. Carter G. Woodson, who started Black History Week that has evolved to Black History Month. And those, again, who know and understand, celebrate and honor and respect Black History every single day. But we definitely want to take this moment when people have their focus on it to recognize it. So we have a great guest, and she is a history maker in and of herself. And we can't wait for you all to meet her. Some of you all know her. She's a true shaker and mover. So if we can go to a quick break. We're going to bring her right up uh, here on the Tori Muhammad Show so you can hear from our uh, sister Iman Ali. She is the co-founder of Hip Hop Wellness, LLC, and she's been doing some amazing stuff. So I'm going to give you a little bit more when we come back from the break and bring her on in just a few seconds. Welcome to Inhale, Exhale, you guys. We're your health home girls, Dr. Tang Slee and Danny Time. We are being joined today by a guest, Samantha Allen, who's going to work with us today about attachment style. Preoccupied, anxious. That's more so a child that comes from a background where the parent or the caregiver was kind of all over the place. You didn't know what you were going to get, so you were clinging to them when you did have their attention because sometimes I might have it, other times I might not. Because that, it creates an anxiousness in the child, whereas when I get your attention, I want to hold on to it. I want to make sure. So I might cry when you leave or I always want you around. I'm craving your attention. You know, mother-father relationship. The father passed away. Now the mother is over busy. She's working all the time. She doesn't have as much attention as she once had for the children. So now this created an anxious attachment style. Those adults grow up more, considered more clingy in relationships, always wanting attention or feeling like I need to make sure we're okay, fear abandonment, fear that we might be breaking up or you might be leaving me alone. So I might check in with you more often. I might call you more. I just need to be assured that everything is okay with our relationship. That anxiousness part is the, the anxiety of the relationship of always thinking something, you know, something might be going wrong. If I called you, you don't answer. Are you upset with me? What did I do? Let's 
figure this out, let's work this out. You're always kind of on edge about where your relationship will go. You get a piece of paper, write down the event, the thought, emotion, and then right. logic. So in this right. case, say that your boyfriend didn't text you back. Okay, that's the event. What is your thought? Oh, well, he doesn't right. care. What's your emotion? I feel unworthy. What's the logic? Well, maybe he's asleep. So <laughs> you got you to do that. That's addressing some of the symptoms. But mm -hmm. overall, you want to engage self-love and self-discovery, right? And just kind of reprogramming your subconscious. Yeah, man. Ideas, ideas, man. You don't have to find me. I'm walking right behind me. So clear to see that you wanna be free. You don't have to find me. I'm walking right behind you. So clear to see that you wanna be free. Let's go. Standing my ground, I can't mess around. It's like my time is in a bottle, captured by your love. Now I know women's got this thing going on. We can't stay around so long. But I wanna come correct Baby, get your foot off my neck You don't have to find me I'm walking right behind you Understand clearly That you wanna be free It's the time that you spend Making me think within It's the trust still beginning Fade away from beginning of the day I can see you trembling times And I can see you wondering mine Is it me considered Shoot us with it See you don't have to find me I'm walking right behind you Alright, alright, alright We are. You flipped it. We are coming back, and we are excited to have the next guest on the show, the Tori Muhammad Show, with my wonderful co-host Linda Perez. Now, as I introduce her, I'm going to ask her if she can switch her camera landscape. Do you mind switch okay. your switch your camera landscape? This. That there we go there we go now all, all right, right brothers and sisters man i'm so excited about our next guest i've known her for a while she has been a true shaker and mover the epitome of it she is the co-founder of hip-hop wellness llc and she's been a hip-hop activist for roughly 20 years working with uh, some of the hip-hop legends like russell simmons uh, she's been working with uh, Snoop Dogg. So with Russell Simmons, she was a part of helping with economic empowerment issues. And uh, him and her have a, a connection with it. We're going to talk about in just a moment with her in terms of spirituality. And then she's worked, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, with she was the first head of Snoop Dogg's Youth Football League. And she's been working behind the scenes, connecting major and all types of artists with corporations focused on social responsibility. She is an urban Zen integrative therapist, and she is Iman Ali. Welcome to the Tori Muhammad Show. How are you doing today? Hey, Tori. How are you? Thank you for having me. Tori, is my camera okay? It is perfect. Or do I need to switch around a little bit? It's perfect. Okay, Just make perfect. sure it's stable. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We'll, we'll so. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pleased, man. I got you on with a, with with definitely a, a a black woman who loves to hear about black women who are empowering others. Uh, Linda Perez, my co-host, and man, we're excited to hear what's going on with you today. Hey, Linda. <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. It's a delay, but great. Good morning. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank yep. you. Yeah, nobody has any other sound on, right? Oh, Make sure all your other speakers and everything is muted. And uh, and then we'll work yes. through it. All right. So, first of all, Iman Ali, you are an urban zen integrative therapist. So, tell us, first of all, about what integrative mm -hmm. medicine is. Yes, sir. Um, integrative medicine is a term that describes um, not just addressing the disease that a person is, is experiencing, but looking at the whole person. Uh, we know in Western medicine, we have a uh, system that sort of separated mind and body at a certain point. So we're going to treat the mind different and we're going to treat the body different uh, as two separate entities. Uh, which we know is, is, is totally ludicrous. I'm not even sure how they came up with that. But um, when you talk about integrate, an integrative approach, uh, if someone has cancer, okay, there is always an energetic component to um, that physical disease. Any disease, any discomfort that we have in the physical body is always connected to something mental, emotional, uh, and something energetic. Uh, we know that uh, in science, an atom is 99.99999% energy and only 0.000001% of physical matter. Now, if that's the basic building block of all living things, then that means we're more energy than we are physical substance. And we spend more time focused in on the physical when the physical is really a byproduct of uh, what is unseen or the energy. So when we talk integrate an integrative approach, what we're doing is we're taking a look at the whole person. What are the lifestyle habits of that person that need to be corrected in order to correct uh, what has appeared in the physical body, okay? And that's not just on a physical level, but also uh, mental and emotional as well. Um, integrative medicine, um, we work with energy-based therapy. Energy medicine is one of the fastest growing, it's really the fastest growing in the United States. And it's, we're kind of late, you know, in the Western world, but this is all ancient, this is all natural healing. Uh, we've done it in the church, what we call laying on of hands, which we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, we're just taking a look at the whole person. So from diet, from lifestyle, uh, other lifestyle habits, relationships, uh, all of those things come into play when we talk about integrative approach. So an integrative therapy would be considered uh, chiropractic, um, massage, Reiki, uh acupuncture, naturopath, all of those quote unquote holistic um, medicines that sort of work fully together in a whole comprehensive way to address a person's um, current issue that they're dealing with. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. So um, how did this journey start for you? This is obviously, you know, a lot of people shy away from and, and don't want traditional medicines and, and surgeries and things like that, but they don't take the approach to really focus on the, doing really? the things or learning the things that they need to heal themselves. So what started this journey for you uh, to where you are today? Well, it started with me when I was uh, in my early 20s. Uh, my father, growing being just want to say growing up, uh, born in Mississippi, in the Mississippi Delta, coming to the Chicago at age two with my mother, who was a teenage mother, by the way, uh, coming from a very rural area, growing up on the west side of Chicago. We started out in um, uh, Rockwell Gardens, and so you know about that. And, uh, and then just growing up on that west side, K-Town, just a lot of traumas happened at before I was even seven years old, seeing my mom rob three times uh, well, while I was with her uh, once at gunpoint. All of this happened before age of seven. 
uh, and just a series of other things. Things did smooth out for us a little later when my mom started doing better economically and we became quote unquote middle class and she bought her first piece of property. So, uh, but my family, most of my family came from the Delta. My father didn't do so well. Uh, drugs and alcohol, uh, when he got into uh, Chicago, kind of ran his life, a uh, very short life at that. Um, he ended up dying at 38. I was 19 when my dad died, uh, but he, he died of a trauma, hit by a train, wasn't in a car, 90-something uh, percent alcohol in the body uh, at the time of death. Um, I'm 19. I'm at Northern Illinois University. I have to plan his funeral because I'm his oldest child. Uh, I did, uh, but a couple of years later, and I thought I just was going on. I did transfer into Columbia College there in Chicago and was just continuing, you know, thinking that I was okay. Uh, but something else happened that triggered everything, which was another traumatic event in my, in my life that triggered everything that caused me to be in a hospital. And they tried to give me medication for um, what I was knew was an emotional issue that I was dealing with because all of the past traumas that I had gone through with my mom, et cetera, came rushing forward uh, as if they had just happened. Um, I knew at that early age that a pill was not going to help me. What I needed to do was get to the root of that um, and then begin some other treatments. At Columbia College, it was my last uh, year as an undergrad uh, there. I had to take some electives and I saw these two classes. I couldn't pronounce one of the words, the four letter word. But when I read what it did, I knew that I needed that, especially after what I had just come through. Uh, that word was yoga. And that was 1995, Tori, taking my first yoga at Columbia College. There were no yoga studios. There were no yoga mats in Target and what we see now. The second thing that I did was there was another class called Mystical Consciousness East and West. And that class I took also uh, where I learned about uh, meditation. Actually, I was taught meditation by my Japanese. Japanese teacher there. And he also was a therapist. He began working with me once a week uh, where he taught me uh, how to do meditation to heal, how to visualize where in the body the, um, if there was a certain emotion that came up, where in the body did it exist? And so what we did, we start, he started training me on how to dissolve and ease that, that tension and that energy. I later, of course, found out um, that began my journey, by the way. So from Deepak Chopra to um, the Deepak Chopra Center in New York to different Japanese uh, versions of meditation. I'm trained in transcendental meditation, which a lot of, um, of uh, mostly all of Hollywood does. Uh, you've probably heard of it, TM, Oprah, and Ellen DeGeneres, everybody. Uh, but trained in transcendental, trained in mindfulness over the years. But that's what began the journey for me uh, for uh, helping myself recover from those traumas that have happened. What I learned was that when something happens to you, um, the body stores memory. It stores memory at a, at a muscular level, at a cellular level, until you're able to deal with it. This is why through massage therapy, uh, Tori, you can have a massage and be on the table. If they hit a certain area where that memory is stored in the body, you'll have what's called an emotional release. And you'll start crying and you'll start thinking of this thing because it's being held in the body. And when we think about going to a chiropractor, most of us only think about chiropractic help when we're in a trauma uh, or a car accident. We're, that's Chiropractor is looking for what, what they call uh, sublization. Sublization is any type of um, uh, jar in uh, the flow of information moving up that spinal cord. So if there's any type of disalignment, that's what they're looking for. And sublizations can happen only three ways from a, from a trauma, which most people go to chiropractor for, 
uh, from toxins in your body. So that goes back to that nutrition and what the sister was talking about with her changing the diet and fish tacos and all that. So toxins in the body is another way that it can happen. But the third way, which I thought was so, so fascinating is a thought. A thought can alter mm. your alignment in your spine where you're not even, you know, getting what you need because the spinal cord, that's the heart of that central nervous system. That's where information flows to the brain. Most of us don't think of our spine as a, a member of the brain, as a part of the brain, but it really is. So um, think about that. A thought alone can shift you where you're all twisted, you know, you say, hey, you twisted or you got me twisted. <laughs> we really are. We really are walking around without all of the capacities that we can have. So that's what got me into um, the field. Uh, and then it went from from that to uh, just meditating for for many, many years, for 20 plus years now, um, and then becoming, you know, a therapist myself. Um, and, and working with people to help them, you know, go through a process that, that I, I know so well uh, is uh, uh, very, very effective. Man, I absolutely love it. There is some, you know, you, you, you touched on so many different areas, but one thing I love to highlight is that I love entrepreneurs who had a problem that they solved for themselves and learned something and then create a business out of it to help other people. I think that's so important and that's so, uh, it, it, it reflects the, yeah. the passion and commitment you have to help other people to heal uh, whatever is going through with them. Uh, you did talk about something that I think, and if we can relate it to even a current uh, hip hop artist, uh, G Herbo here in Chicago talks a lot about PTSD. He has a whole album where he talks about that. Yes. And you really are talking about that and some of the trauma that you went through at a young age. Our community is suffering from PTSD in Absolutely. so many different um, areas, and we're not, we're not addressing it properly to deal with the, that emotional pain that's being tied up uh, into, our, into our whole body like you're talking about. Um, so talk a little bit about what are some of the things that people mm -hmm. can do. And, of course, we want to know how people... Uh, can get in touch with you, but what what's one tip that somebody can do uh, to, you know, kind of start getting themselves on a the path for uh, healing? Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned um, uh, G Herbo because last year uh, we launched a hip hop wellness experience with G Herbo uh, right before he released PTSD. Uh, there in Chicago um, uh, with Chicago Public Schools. And the whole piece was really around meditation um, because I've worked in the entertainment industry for over a decade and I worked particularly with hip hop artists uh, trying to address the traumas and the social ills that have been caused by the traumas we've gone through as a people in, in this country. Uh, this was a natural thing. So some of them uh, began reaching out to me about, you know, uh, J. Cole's people reached out to say, hey, you know, Cole's re uh, got this song out on meditation. I really want, instead of doing a meet and greet, let's do a meditation experience uh, on Cole's next, um, you know, tour. So it was a natural synergy to bring up and of course, when Kanye had his breakdown, which was very public, we began to see uh, that the hip hop artists and celebrities are uh, just as vulnerable as the little brother that's on the street in Chicago, because we do come from that. OK, so money does not change things. Money only magnifies what's there. OK, and if you don't get that um, I asked G Herbo at our at the event had he ever had a massage. He has never had a massage in his life. So not even being being touched in a way that can relieve some pressure, he's never even had that. So meditation, I would say, is the number one uh, tip that I could say for anyone to do. Uh, that's being able to get still, uh, quiet the mind. It takes 20 minutes to bring the brain waves down from beta to alpha. That alpha brainwave state is the state of calm, 
It's the state of relaxation. It also is the state for creativity and productivity. And that's why mindfulness is being used by, you know, major corporations, um, the NBA, the NFL, everyone is turning now that they have to go within to address anything that's happening to them. And how you do that is being able to calm your mind 20 minutes a day is all that it takes to be able to bring your central nervous system down. You have less stress. Uh, you have less, you lower the blood pressure, you lower hypertension. Absolutely. There's so much there that you can do. So 20 minutes a day of meditation is what I would say. Man, beautiful. And I would agree with that. That works. The meditation works. Um, I use it. It helps me when I'm getting to that point of stress in business. Um, but I do have a question. What would you say to the parents that have younger children with, you know, with this situation? Uh, would you recommend that they listen to the doctors as far as putting them on medication or do, would you do a natural way with the children? Because it's, it's starting to affect our children. We're starting to see a lot, um, especially the children that has the IEPEs and things like that in school. Uh, what is your recommendation to parents? Good question. Again, meditation. Uh, through da through the David Lynch Foundation, um, David Lynch, you know, is the producer does Twin Peaks. So um, I got involved with Dave, the David Lynch Foundation through Russell, uh, and there in Chicago, uh, I'm an advisor on the advisory board for David Lynch Foundation, and we took transcendental meditation into Chicago public schools mm -hmm. uh, into some of the most war zone areas. We got a grant from Chicago, Chicago State, oh no, Chicago University, University of Chicago, I'm sorry, uh, to see if it would decrease any of the violence that was happening in the school. And absolutely, if you could begin to sit with your child or uh, began to show them how they can get, we call it quiet time. And we used to have that in Chicago public schools where you put your head on the desk. Tori, I don't know if you grew up and you yes. remember that, but we used to have time where we just were quiet at school. That That's the best way. There are apps that I would say um, would be good for parents to use. There's Calm, um, which is a, the number one app for sleep meditation. That's another issue happening, insomnia. Uh, but then also yes. I would say Headspace is another uh, of the major ones. We're working on an app right now uh, that is more geared toward our people. So uh, for meditation, so you can look for that as well. Okay. Okay. Beautiful, thank you. And you know, there <clears throat> is the individual traumas that we face You're welcome. that we come in contact with in our lives. And then there's the group trauma of black people, right? And one of those incredibly traumatic situations that affects people who were living during that time and still affect us today is uh, Emmett Till. And we know that you've been doing some work um, around uh, Emmett Till's legacy. So can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, when I was uh, a producer at um, uh, CLTV there in Chicago, uh, after uh, the final call, shout out to the final call for um, starting my career in journalism uh, and the power of the black press. Um, but it was at CLTV that I actually met uh, Mamie Till. I was supposed to set up an interview with her, uh, but it ended up being almost a two hour conversation with her. Um, and it, it was one of those moments in my life that I said, this was not a, a accident or coincidence. So I noted that and everything that she, she told me and encouraged me on. Uh, years later, 2014, I met her niece, uh, Deborah Watts, who is the co-founder of the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. Uh, we met in Atlanta and became friends. I became uh, ambassador for the Emmett Till Legacy uh, Foundation. A few months later, I meet another cousin of Emmett Till in Mississippi uh, on the set of the James Brown biopic, Get On Up. And so the two of them didn't know each other, but we ended up uh, uh, I ended up introducing them. And then we all got together in, in uh, Mississippi. Um, I said, you know, we're, we're sisters of the movement and there needs to be some type of TV show uh, chronicling 
you know, women who are actually doing this type of work, especially around Emmett's legacy. So what happened, mm -hmm. we, we went over and we started a podcast and we started getting moving. We ended up stopping, but what happened recently is uh, the project that I'm on now, uh, Jay-Z, Will Smith, executive producers of Women of the Movement, an ABC drama series about Mamie Till and her fight for her son, Emmett. Uh, I have been casted as um, a production with uh, working alongside the lead actress, Adrian Warren, who's playing Mamie Till. I'm her double, I'm her stand-in. And standing in as Mamie Till, we're, we're, I'm on a little break now because we just wrapped season one. Uh, this, is a, this is the time when I tell you, uh, Brother Tori and sister, like being down in Mississippi, uh, during this time and the set and going back and forth from Chicago to Mississippi, you still see the traumatic effect of, of, of Emmett's death on Mississippi. The energy is still there on some of the spaces. I've been doing a lot of energy work to help ground and clear uh, so that it could be safe. Uh, someone shot up at shot at our um, uh, production studio the other night. Uh, people are upset that this is being done. They're saying some of the whites are saying, "Well, you know, why don't you leave that BS alone? This is let us go on with our life." But the reality is, there still has not been justice for Emmett Till. Miss um, Bryan is still out. She's 86 years old. If Bill Cosby can be in jail, she could be in jail too. Uh, we know she's she's co confessed to lying, all of that stuff. But the reality is the trauma of it is still impacting our people there in the South and in impacting us. Most of the trauma that we see going on in Chicago is related to the trauma that happened in Mississippi, okay? Because most of our people came up from Mississippi into Chicago. So it is a, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of, of Jay and uh, Will Smith uh, not only for two black men to be in the position to to do what they're doing um, from hip hop, by the way, and then uh, for them having the consciousness to know that Emmett's story is still happening. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'll be leading a healing for the uh, Ahmaud Arbery's family down in Brunswick, Georgia. And they've reached out, I've reached out to them and we've been going back and forth about the, who helps the families after the media is gone and after the march is in, in who helps these families begin to heal from that trauma uh, that's happening. Deborah Watson, the, the, the uh, Emmett's family, they can't even go in Mississippi without security. Okay, so this is um, this is this is an important piece. So I think I'm very, very grateful. And I, I, I do know that it is divine order for even for me to be playing stand in and double for for Mamie Till standing in her her place to help to help get justice for Emmett. And so what we're doing with the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, we're still fighting for some type of justice for him. There's an Emmett, Till, Emmett Lewis Till anti-lynching bill. If you want to know more information about how to get involved with that, please go to the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation.org. Uh, look up Deborah Watts. Uh, let her know Iman sent you. Uh, we, we want to push this piece of legislation through. It got hung up in the Senate um, last year. But I do believe that with this, uh, this piece that we're doing here, this will bring some light and help to get us there. And we're wanting to connect with um, reform through, through Jay and what they're doing with the, with the justice system. So uh, there's a lot of moving pieces here um, uh, in helping our people to heal from, from this. Because if Emmett doesn't get justice, there can be no justice for Breonna Taylor, for George Floyd, for all of these names that have come and all of these families because Emmett needs justice and it will trigger the justice for all of the rest of us who have come after him. That's beautiful. And, you know, we got to give some, some recognition to the city council because they did pass an ordinance a couple of days ago where the home yes. uh, of yes. Mamie Till, 6427 South St. Lawrence, has been designated as a That's historical right. landmark uh, home. And so 
you can yes. have that piece of memory. You're so too. excited about that on set. Absolutely. Yes. I know that was a great moment on set. And so, and I definitely have to, you know, I've, I've never said this moment. to you, but, uh, but I have to publicly uh, acknowledge and uh, apologize to you because a shout out to the final call. We met and worked together at the final call newspaper. And sometimes during, we'd be there for long hours, right? Getting, you know, editing, reading the cup paper, yes. making sure there were no mistakes. And sometimes uh, she would take a break. Your mom would go take a break and meditate. And I would be saying in my mind, what's she down there, down there meditating? She better get up here and read these pages. <laughs> so I had no, I had no <laughs> understanding of, you were, you were light years ahead of me, right? I, I meditate, you better read these pages so we can get up out of here. <laughs> Uh, but you were making, you were calming yourself and centering yourself uh, so that you can do a better job. But in my mind, <laughs> I was fussing at you. So I apologize for fussing at you for meditating. Yes. I understand the importance and value of it a lot more yeah. <laughs> 20-something years later. Tori, you made, Tori, I forgot about that. I, remember I used to go up in that in the room that used to be Dr. Collett's office. Yes. Back there, I found that place to, as my perfect spot for meditation. <laughs> I said, she ain't in, she up there sleeping. She ain't meditating. By the way, okay? <laughs> that's right. So, man, so you've definitely been on that path for a while, and thank you for now leading others through holistic health and healing. It's so important with all the medication and stuff that people are, yes. are being put on. That's not helping them, but mm-hmm. actually causing more problems. So, make sure to let people know where they that's can right. get in contact with you, and uh, we're going to be. Um, and you're going yes. to a quick break in a minute, but we appreciate you for coming on the show and tell people how they can get in touch with you. Thank you. And thank you all for having me, Tori. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of everything that you're doing. Um, uh, I'm just going to keep it simple. You can reach me at the real Iman Ali, the real Iman Ali on Instagram, and you'll find all my information there. Oh, absolutely beautiful. So shout out to everyone who's been listening. We appreciate Danielle <laughs> And uh, folks that have been liking and sharing the page, we appreciate you all here at the Tori Muhammad Show on What's In It For The Black People Media. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If, if they missed it, tell them to come back on and uh, watch the replay after it's over. But we got some, some more great guests coming on. And Iman, we appreciate you, and we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Shop at Black-Owned and Operated Solo Beauty, where you are appreciated and respected. Located at 8158 South Cottage Grove, Solo Beauty can supply all of your black hair care needs. Solo Beauty is open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Greetings, family. I am Salim Muwakil, and I welcome you to Muwakil's World. I'm going to chop it up with... Dr. Lance Williams, professor at Jacob Carruthers Center for Inner City Studies, and one of the most knowledgeable scholars of, of Chicago's street organizations. Doing a doo-wop era, you wouldn't be doing no doo-wop about what you was doing in the street. That was improper. What made rap so unique was that for the first time, this is how we actually are living, especially at the bottom. So what happens is it becomes so popular because it's so raw. And ultimately, rappers realize that this is what sells. And this is what the industry wants. So even guys who don't have authentically have those experiences and and young women are rapping about it and having success. And after years of now this happening, it, it it becomes known that, hey, this dude ain't really no real gangster. You know, this is a studio gangster. And what it did was music lost credibility because people thought they were listening to real gangsters rap. The sales of the music who basically was being consumed by white suburban youth. This was their way of, it was a voyeuristic way of experiencing the hood, which they've always been fascinated with without actually putting your life in danger. So you can listen to it. But once they found out, oh, these dudes ain't real, then even they stopped buying it. What's going on in the streets today? Because what the industry did was they realized, hey, the studio gangster thing ain't going to work. So guess what? Let's go get some real gangsters that got the real credibility. But, you know, when Chief Keef and these guys, so what we have expressed in the music scene today when you deal with either, you know, trap down stuff, but particularly drill music is the hot music That's right. nationally. Right? And internationally. And internationally, right, which, which started right here mm-hmm. on 63rd. 
Oblak. Okay, Oblak. So it's a shooting culture. So that, that's what they're rapping about. And that's what is hot, right? And so we saw the tragedy. Fratricide is hot. Yeah, that's what we, the tragedy of, of King Bond, right? Of, of him, you know, he's a real, a real dude. From now what happens is, because that's the model of success, everybody is following that. So everybody wants to be a shooter now. And what it's doing is it's driving a lot of the violence. In any culture, your music and your entertainment is a part of your cultural expression. So whenever you can have an extended period of time of a particular type of music that's having influence, it becomes a part of your culture. That's what that's what Kwabana is saying in terms of his activism. I'm saying basically these radio stations are helping to uh, uh, produce a culture that's leading to the death and destruction of the black community so that they can sell, commodify, you know, their merch, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, we losing a lot of little brothers and sisters in the streets because of this, the way they think about things, how they see themselves, which they get from the music. Now, people are like, well, that's crazy that they're being influenced by music. They should be influenced by the values of their families. Ideally, yes, but the reality of the society that we live in is who has the biggest voice. And we know the media is the biggest voice in terms of ideals in, in the society that we live in. If that fratricidal motif is being absorbed primarily by, by white listeners, who are, who's the primary uh, audience, yes. why aren't they exhibiting this kind of behavior? Because, first of all, it's not their identity. The Chicago Legal Network is the collaboration of attorneys that concentrate in many areas of the law most needed in Chicago neighborhoods. The CLN lawyers focus on personal injury, criminal defense, and other issues. The CLN lawyers all average over 20 years of legal experience and are dedicated to helping the Chicago community. The Chicago Legal Network is committed to developing black lawyers through mentorship and co-representation. So if you were injured in a car accident, slip and fall, or injured on the job, or you need assistance with criminal defense, including driving violations and DUI, check out out chicagolegalnetwork.com for more information or call 773-912-3545 773-912-3545-WIFTBPM All right, all right, all right. We are back. We are back. And, um, man, I'm so excited, man, for our next guest. Oh, man, we got we got a little typo there, but we're going to work on that. Don't worry about it. Um, today is an amazing day. We have some great people on today. We just heard from Iman Ali. And now we have an amazing brother, Sean Ladry. Now, there's a typo. It, it says on the, on the, on the lower third L-E-D-R-E-P. It's supposed to be L-E-D-R-E-E. -E. So we're just going to make that verbal uh, correction there because, hey, listen, I'm the bad guy today, man. I'm messing up on all. I got I got people texting me, fussing at me. I got maids fussing at me. <laughs> Only person ain't Good. fussed at me is Sonya. Good. You need it. Why <laughs> not fussing at me? But um, we definitely are working on it. And the most important, I want you all to focus on the spirit and the content. <laughs> that we have today that we are giving you and we appreciate each and every one of you tell a friend to tell a friend that Tori Muhammad show is on. And I want to tell you all introduce to you all to some of you all. Some of you all may know him, but man, I am meeting him for the first time. He is the CEO of loop investing technologies and Linda, you're going to like this because he grew up on Chicago South side in the Roseland neighborhood. He is, he has over 15 years of financial expertise working for many of the world's most prestigious institutions you know those companies you hear them on tv some of you all do banking business with them morgan stanley bank of america merrill lynch <laughs> and jp morgan chase these are some of my favorite and some of my nemesis <laughs> <laughs> every time i get it hey man I, I used to get so many uh overdraft fees from chase and from bank of america i said they gonna close this account pretty soon because they tired of me Every dog on week, I got overdraft. <laughs> but they got some money from me at the same time. But I also appreciate them because they make it easy for me to get my money from businesses. <laughs> so we, we love and hate them all at the same time. So, But when we want to welcome Sean on. He's passionate about teaching his community, our community, 
about transforming the economic landscape landscape rather of underserved and underbanked communities. So we have Brother Sean. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you. Welcome, Thank Sean. you so much. Thank you so much uh, to Ray. Thank you so much, Linda. Appreciate uh, you guys having me on today and uh, uh, really honored to be here. Man, absolutely. It's our pleasure. Thank so, you for coming on. Then Linda, I know you got a question because, you know, she's been she's been doing some some investing with Robin Hood, man. It's in the news today. Can you talk a little bit about that controversy? And then we're going to get into uh, <laughs> what you're doing to help our community. Right. So, uh, you know, Robin Hood uh, and, and most recently uh, in the chat names. Again, this is not something I've called them, but uh, Rob the Hood. Um, they've gotten into a little bit of trouble because of the, where, where they, where, you got to ask yourself, where's their allegiance? So a lot of people um, may not have known that Robin Hood um, does not charge. Well, a lot of people know Robin Hood does not make money off of charging commissions. And, and, and Brother Torrey, I, I'm pretty sure that you know this, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And so from that standpoint, uh, they're not they're not a nonprofit. Robin Hood is not a 5013C, so they got to be making money somewhere. So recently, um, it got swept under the rug. Robin Hood was fined $65 million uh, for not executing on best uh, best practices for their clients. Uh, the way that Robin Hood's business model works is that they actually sell all of your data, all of our retail investment data. Uh, so Linda's data, my data, if I'm using the platform, uh, they sell that to institutions. So the question you have to ask yourself is what institution can actually afford to get that type of information? Typically, it's going to be hedge funds. So that's number one. So point number two yeah. is when uh, GameStop became such a really big sensation in this uh, Reddit chat. Uh, and I'm not going to say their names. You can look it up. I'm going to, you know, give them free promo. Uh, but inside this Reddit chat, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they have they. When I first looked at it, they had two million members and uh, two million um, subscribers to this Reddit chat. They're up to they're up to seven million now, and most of them were using Robinhood. And so Robinhood literally said, "Hey, look, uh, we're not we're going to limit the number of volume in this stock." Now, the question, and we'll see this when it plays out in terms of the actual hearings, because you had Senator Warren go on the news rounds yesterday and say, hey, look, we're going to have hearings to figure out what happened. Um, one side of the story is that Robin Hood limited the trades because they didn't have sufficient capital to back the trades. And that's fine uh, if that is the truth. Uh, the other theory is that they limited the trades because one of their biggest biggest buyers of their data is actually on the other side of this trade so the trade literally is a short squeeze trade is a short sale so basically the, the the way to understand this is that in order for someone to make money on this trade they actually the stock has to go down so so brother Torre, if you actually own gang stock and i say i believe the price is going to go down i'm going to borrow it well, then I go to Linda and say, hey, can you can you brother, can you borrow uh, borrow that stock for me? And I agree to pay it back with interest. Now, regardless of how the trade, uh, no matter the, the price of the actual stock, if it goes up or goes down at a certain point in time, I've agreed to deliver these, these shares back. Now, if the stock goes down, I make money. But if the stock goes through the roof, I, I have to eat that. And so what you're seeing is, is that a lot of these hedge funds uh, have unlimited loss uh, exposure because they decided to short the stock. And so if the stock continues to go higher, uh, they're under more pressure to actually close out that trade and, and, and go ahead and take the loss or continue to hope that it comes back on them. And so I, I think the main thing that we can take away from it is just the power of how um, you know a group of strangers were able to get together and to come under a common cause uh, all those, you know, to, to fatten their pockets, uh, but they were able to execute on it. And I think that's the main takeaway from uh, what we're seeing uh, play out in real time. Man, thank you for that. Linda, does that clear things up for you? Does that help? Yeah, I was doing my own research, but yes, he was touching the things that I was, you know, 
research and understanding what they've been doing this stuff for years. Um, nothing head. Everyone knows they've been doing this for years. So someone put the lawsuit is what made things come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I think the the one caveat that I would say is that you know we've seen hedge funds uh, and institutions do this for years. Um, and there's a fine line to ask yourself, you know, should retail investors be allowed to do it? Um, I think they should. Um, however, I do think that there need to be guardrails in place uh, because what happens is, is that you consistently have situations where individuals aren't acting in their own best interest. What do I mean by that? Uh, if you're taking your, 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 your rent money, you're taking your mortgage money to actually put in a stock market, that's gambling, right? That's not investing. Um, and yeah. what we have seen is that uh, the exposure to options, if you don't understand them, you shouldn't be investing in them. Now, that's not just, you know, uh, being a snob or saying, well, you know, you're, you're not sophisticated. If you don't know what the hell you're buying, why are you investing in it? Right. I, 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 I can't tell you the number of conversations right. that I've had where people hit me up and say, hey, Sean, should I be investing in these call options? And, you know, they don't know you know, the basic things about the call option, like, like you know, the, the amount of exposure that you have to it. So these things aren't necessarily um, bad in the uh, in of themselves, but I think that in the hands of the, uh, of the wrong individual or the less sophisticated individual, they can cause massive harm. Um, and again, I, I, I'm not gonna harp on Robin Hood, but again, you know, uh, the facts bear out uh, what's out there. Um, there are a number of, individuals and unfortunately black individuals who have gone to robin hood who actually started trading in options and who have lost thousands upon thousands of dollars there's a great new york times article about uh these would-be investors uh who who have lost it all um because there were no safeguards and they're the most tragic story of, the, of them all it comes from uh, comes from illinois comes from a, a young man right outside of the chicago suburbs who literally thought that he was a million dollars in debt because of options, uh, come to find out it was a trading error, but uh, nonetheless, he had already written a suicide note and committed suicide. This was a young, a young guy who, who, who wasn't even in his, uh, who was in his early 20s. So, you know, the stock market uh, is a great way to invest for long-term generational wealth. Uh, and my saying is this, if you wanna gamble, go to Vegas. Go to the boat. They will give you a free drink. They might comp you your room and you'll feel good knowing that you lost your money. But if you are looking to get your kicks uh, from 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 gambling through the stock market, you are asking for a world of trouble. Man, great points, man. Shout out to Boosie Latham. And now, Dan would you recommend that people have mentors before they jump in? Uh, I'm sorry. Good question. <laughs> so. I said, would you recommend that people get a mentor before getting into stocks so they can get educated? Like, what would be the tip for them to learn? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, before uh, they jump into it. I would say it. that, you know, uh, getting a mentor is fine if that mentor knows what the heck they're doing, right? Because it, it can't be a situation of the blind leading the blind. Uh, I, and, and I know that historically in our <laughs> community, we have been very hesitant to trust uh, financial institutions, and rightfully so. Uh, if we go back and we look at our history of the free man's bank after uh, after slavery, mm -hmm. uh, Freeman's bank did more in terms of uh, hurting the psyche of the black community in financial institutions than any than anything ever. Uh, you had at one point you had uh, you know. You, you had uh, this bank literally cause so many people to go further into debt after coming out of slavery. And so we have a healthy reason to be skeptical about um, banking institutions. However, in spite of having this healthy fear of financial institutions, Facebook is not your, your, your sole source for financial information. Uh, I, I'm always a little bit shocked and surprised when I see people just go into these chat rooms and ask their timeline, what should I be investing in? And it's like, look, if they don't have two pennies to rub together, what makes you think that their, their advice is, is, is worth anything, right? And That's then right. the other thing too, and, and, and we can all appreciate this, like, you know, um, uh, I'm a big hip hop fan and, 
And, uh, you know, I make no qualms about it. Big, um, you know, uh, Big E fan and, and bad boy. Uh, he said, you know, bad boys moves, moves in silence. If you're actually making moves and you're making legitimate investment decisions, you're not going to be broadcasting in Facebook for everybody else to be doing the same thing that you're doing because that takes away the opportunity. So uh, the advice that you get, that you get, it, it should be worth something. And I'm not saying that you got to go out there and you got to, you know, go pay somebody, you know, to, to, to give you, um, you know, pay them $500 on retainer uh, if that's not what you can afford. What I'm saying is that verify your mentors. Uh, there are great resources out there. Matter of fact, um, a shameless plug, our, our site actually uh, has blog posts on uh, different things. But, you know, verify, uh, trust but verify. And, and I'm a little bit leery about anyone who's trying to get uh, stock information from Twitter, Facebook, or Reddit um, if they don't know exactly where the source is coming from. Because, because uh, not everyone who says that they're for you is actually for you, and, and not everyone who says they're against you is actually against you, right? So from that standpoint, uh, hat, working with people that you know who have done this right. before, uh, that you can go to FINRA, um, uh, you can go to brokercheck.org and actually see if that person actually is who, who's a, who they say they are, right? If they said they're a financial advisor, they, they should be found on the internet. Uh, they should, what I, I guess the bottom line, Linda, what I'm saying is that there should be a track record. If I tell you that I am a successful uh, musician, you should be able to go into the Apple store and see if I have, uh, you know, see if I have some, some albums. If I tell you if I'm a successful investor, Absolutely. I should be able to kind of tell you exactly, hey, this is what I'm doing, caution you on different things. Uh, just because you can spout out, you should buy Bitcoin does not make you a, a, an investor. And it definitely shouldn't make you a, a mentor of somebody who doesn't know as much uh, as the next person. Man, Rashawn, you passed the first test because I know we didn't pose that question to, uh, ahead of time. You didn't know I was going to ask you about Robin Hood, but you came in and gave some perspective on it. So that <laughs> we're trying to see if you might be our next mentor in this stock game. And, um, man, we definitely – I'm an advocate of learning from people who already know. Uh, I love that you said that. Google and Facebook is not your source. It can help you. It can give you some research, but you need to walk with somebody who knows that thing in and out and understands the pitfalls and all of that. Uh, so, man, tell us a little bit about, you know, because I'm excited, man, because I y'all don't know. I got two of Roseland's finest in here, two entrepreneurs uh, who are taking it, man. Don't don't tell me don't nothing could, good come out of the wild hundreds. Now, I got two people right here that, that changed the paradigm, right? <laughs> so talk oh, a little God. bit about how you got to, on this journey, man, to be – um, right. such a great advisor and working with all these different institutions and, and why it's important for you to help people invest into um, the black community, our community and brown communities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I love what you said towards the end, uh, uh, because honestly, we're in the same boat. Uh, you know, the one I'll, I'll start start now and kind of kind of go back. So. One of the things that really breaks my heart when you go through Roseland, um, you start off at 119th in Michigan and go all the way down to 111th, is that uh, you see all these buildings, all these buildings that are boarded up. Uh, I remember growing up in Roseland, Gately's people, right? And people are like, who's Gately's people? Gately's people was like Sears, right? You can go into Gately's people, it's a department store. Uh, you can see somebody who looked like you, it was, you know, they had nice clothes. They even had a Gately's People Furniture Store. That I'm, and my mom actually worked there. And, you know, Roseland, like a, the yeah. kids growing up now. So when my son goes back to Chicago and we take him to Old Fashioned Donut, because whenever I go back to Chicago, uh, that's a must stop. That's, that's non-negotiable. It's like one of my first stops, right? And, you know, they don't, yes. they don't remember. They don't, they see Roseland as like, ugh, right? And I remember... Well, we used to grow up when we were growing up, man, we would hop on the 34 South Michigan mm -hmm. and we would go to the movie theater, right? And then like we would walk up and down and that'd be a whole day. And, you know, now you look up, you know, and I hate to say it because it becomes such mm -hmm. a, a cliche, you know, there's a liquor store, there's a hair salon, uh, there's a, a currency exchange, there's a pawn shop. Um, and and you, you really ask yourself, it's like, you know, the equivalent of having a food desert. 
right? You hear people say, well, why aren't black and brown communities more healthy? You know, why don't they uh, take better care of their diets? Well, do you see what's in our communities? Like you can't tell somebody whose options are McDonald's, Popeye's and Wendy's that they should be having healthier lifestyles when literally you're trying to just survive. And so, and, and when you can't buy fresh produce, like it literally just smacks of yeah. you being out of touch. And so that's the same thing that we look at in terms of just why, why do our neighborhoods kind of always, they, they look the same, right? No matter if you go to Roseland or if you go to uh, South Central LA or if you go to Detroit, you can tell a black and brown community without even really being told because you're going to see a payday loan, you're going to see a check cash in place, and you're going to see uh, a pawn shop. But if you go to any place like Kenilworth or uh, Wilmet, uh, Winnetka or, you know, or places like that, you're not going to see those things. And so for me, it's like, well, how do we bring capital back into uh, black and brown areas so that places like Old Fashioned Donuts can actually get capital to expand and thrive? Because the thing about it is it this, like having that, you know, having that loan Chase Bank on 103rd in Roseland, that's great. However, you know, that's one bank compared to the six, six currency exchanges in the area versus the four payday loans in the area as well. We got one brick and mortar bank in Roseland. And the question is, is that brick and mortar bank make, making loans? Are the they making one. loans to individuals? Are they making loans to, to small businesses? Because if they're not, Everyone who is depositing money into that bank literally has willingly given their money into a bank that's taking that money and then recirculating it out of the community, right? And so, and so the question is, okay, should you just have uh, black banks? Yes, you should, right? But there's so many different parts because if we have a black bank that necessarily can't make the loans, then we're still back where we started, right? And so it, it's a we have to look at this in all sides. And so um, before I even go go down, you know, much further than that, uh, what I got excited about was, you know, growing up, uh, I would look at the stock market uh, on TV. I would find some random access uh, TV uh, channel. Uh, you didn't have CNBC and Bloomberg channels back then. You had to go up to like uh, some nondescript channel, like Channel Twenty Six or something like that. And they'd have the ticker tape going across the, uh, the bottom. And so that made me interested. And then also, too, I got involved uh, in a program that really saved my life. Uh, so I remember growing up and having um, how we used to have the summer job program, right? Uh, the city used to have many kids, uh, you know, you wouldn't be on the block. Like, you'd be happy to get that job, right? You'd be making, you know, making six, seven dollars an hour. And you thought you were a bomb, right? And it's just like, you know, you're, you're, you're excited to get a little, little, little money in your pocket. Um, I was saved by a, a program that was similar to that called by uh, called Chicago Summer Finance Institute. They changed it to S Chicago Summer Business Institute. Uh, it was a great program that was created by Mayor Daly, and uh, it would allow kid. And, and the stipulation was this: you had to be a kid from Chicago proper uh, on your way to college, and they would actually put you into an internship at um, you know Le at Lehman Brothers, Salmon with Barney. Uh, where I actually did my internship, uh, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, and then they expanded it to other areas. And it was just that exposure that really gave me the ability to say, wow, there's a whole nother life here because I have been, I have been through downtown so many times going down there at night, going to the taste of Chicago. That was like the first time I actually was in an office building and said, oh, this is where all the money is. This is what, what you people are doing, right? And so it put me on a path to actually want to uh, learn more about, about finance and um, the, the drive to want to help my people uh, really came about working on Wall Street, seeing how uh, capitalism and, and, and institutional investing uh, somehow, you know, it works for a lot of areas that necessarily take them for granted and in areas that desperately need them, need the capital and need the investment like Roseland, uh, the, the same structure and uh, foundation isn't there. So that's what uh, my goal in life work is, is trying to actually create these uh, frameworks so that people can have the same opportunity to uh, hand down generational wealth. Man, Sean, thank you, man. Walk, walk us through this because we, we did get a, 
a news release, man, from uh, Christy Love and talks about the headline says Loop Investing Technologies announces a new app on MLK Holiday to help black and Latinx communities take control of their neighborhood's financial future. So with that in mind, how can what are you doing and what are the steps that people can take in working with Loop Investing Technologies in this app to actually do that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we announced the, the release of the app. We're on tar- our, our, our launch date is for February 15th uh, during Black History Month. And so when we start talking about why are people so anxious to invest is because they people are starting to realize that, hey, you know, there is a there's a whole opportunity set out there in terms of with uh, the, the financial markets. Uh, that they have not been exposed to, that they haven't gotten access to. Uh, and, and, and people are curious. And so, you know, I support that curiosity. Uh, we want to help out as many people who want to actually invest and save uh, towards their financial goals. Uh, the one thing is that, you know, what we realize is, is that there are so many different apps out there. Uh, and, and what we want to create is a one-stop shop, if you will, for people to uh, get their budgets together. Because how can you actually properly save if you don't know exactly how much you're spending and how much of your income uh, you can afford to actually stash away? Uh, the second thing is that, you know, once you actually uh, know how much you can save, how much can you start putting into, uh, in, into a financial goal to help you reach that, right? Because investing without a purpose and, and, a, and a common goal, uh, people st- tend to lose focus. And, 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 you know, the one thing about it is, is that black and brown communities, we are so giving, we're so loving because we know that we're all in this together. However, uh, what we constantly see is that whoever has it at that point in time typically gets hit up the most. So it's the, it's the person who, who graduated from undergrad. It's the person who has a steady job that when things happen, when calamity happened, um, they're the person who gets dependent on the most. However, it, it, it almost, it, and I hate to say this, it almost reeks of the kind of, you know, the crab in the barrel mentality, right? Uh, whereas before we let someone kind of advance and move on, we're kind of pulling them back down. Um, and I think what happens is that by having a financial goal, it allows people to say, no, I have to accomplish this, whatever that goal may be. It could be, hey, I want to take a vacation with me and my girls to Jamaica next year. Or it could be, hey, uh, I'm putting down for a new house, come hell or come high water, and this is what we're going and this is what we're going to do as a family. And, and, and so when we have those types of goals, uh, the science is clear. We're more likely to actually accomplish and see those goals through to fruition than just blindly investing in the market or saving without some type of purpose behind it, because we're more likely to say no so that we can accomplish our goals. And so what we wanted, and so what, you know, so we, we will have the budgeting piece, we'll have the actual investing piece. And then most importantly, what I'm excited about is the financial education piece. And we have so many different offerings because uh, I'm an old head as, the, as, as my son likes to say, you know, I, I can sit there and read, read a blog post. I can sit there and look at a video. Uh, whereas someone like him, he's just like, you know, snooze and like he'll t- text me back with the snooze uh, emoji, right? Uh, <laughs> but we also have a chat bot. So disrespectful. And so for those individuals who attention span are as, uh, as long as an inch, uh, we have, you know, uh, the ability for you to communicate and ask questions in real time. And so what we think is, is that this, our people p- perish for a lack of knowledge. We want to provide a safe environment um, because people are you. And, and this goes back to your question, Linda, about mentors. People are scared to ask questions because number one, uh, they don't know where to start. Uh, number two, they don't want to be seen as um, as ignorant. They they don't want to be looked upon and uh, looked down upon by anyone. And so, what we want to provide is a safe environment for people to learn at their own pace and learn however uh, they feel comfortable with. So we we think that providing those three things are uh, key and vital. But the most important reason why we're launching this app is so that if I'm investing with Loop Investments, I should have a say to what communities a portion of my portfolio goes into, because that's the option that we're not given. If you invest in an alternative investment fund that's sponsored by some of these big Wall Street companies, they are investing in real estate projects that aren't, in, that, that aren't coming to Roseland, that aren't coming to South Central LA, that aren't coming to you know, Detroit or, or you know, the Fifth Ward, right? 
they are investing in projects that are going into the suburbs, that are going into downtown, places that already have capital that don't need more capital, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is provide an opportunity for individuals to say, hey, listen, hey, Sean, if you put together a fund where small businesses in with, in, within Roseland can actually get access to it, I will be on your platform tomorrow. And so that's what we want to do. We want to give people the opportunity to invest in the communities um, that they care about. Man, that's absolutely beautiful, brother. We appreciate what you're doing. So um, explain um, a little bit more um, what the process is. Did people download that. The app is, is almost ready, right? But, but people have been downloaded. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a membership? Is there a fee? How does that part work? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, what we're trying to do at the very first part, uh, we want people to be users of our app. We want to get feedback. We want to know uh, exactly how we can improve upon it. So um, you know, there, there's no fee uh, associated with it, and we're using all of the latest technology. Uh, the great thing about it is that what we want to do is help provide a space so people can understand how much their spending habits, right? How much are you uh, spending in, uh, how much are you spending on a month in month out basis? How much are you actually, how much of that spend is actually necessary versus, uh, parts that you really don't need. And then what's your capacity to actually save? Um, and, and, and then also provide you with the tools to get the financial education that you need. That's going to be the first portion of our app, uh, probably three to four, uh, months down the road, we actually will uh, allow the investment piece to come through, but uh, it's it's going to be uh, free to all of our users. Uh, we're not selling data at all, and like I said, we're we're using the uh, most uh, latest and greatest in terms of technology from a safety perspective. Uh, and then once we actually introduce the investment piece, uh, we will be providing. Uh, the ability for individuals to have defined financial goals. So uh, what we believe is that having these goals based and having you define it, you tell us your risk tolerance and we'll do the rest. So there's no need for you to sit there and look at the ticker tape or look on CNBC to see if a particular stock is up and down, because honestly, it's a waste of time. It, it really is. Uh, you know, if you got a, if you, if it took you six years to become a teacher, you should not be trying to put together IEPs and lesson plans and looking at CNBC to figure out if your stock went up and down. If you are a police officer, if you are one of Chicago's finest, you're in CPD, you, you don't have time to be sitting in your squad car looking to see if your stock is up or down, right? That, right. that is you not your not job. Be. That's not why you get paid, <laughs> right? You might get killed trying to see if, <laughs> see if you made $5 on your stock, right? So, so that's our job. And, and, and here's the thing why are you investing? Like, like, let's deal with the root of why you're investing and then let's try to help you accomplish that goal. Uh, and, and so that's the approach that we take. And I think what the, the icing on the cake is, is this, we know that small businesses within the black community have been hurt uh, through this pandemic. We know that PPP was not um, distributed equally uh, among small businesses that you had to have had a relationship with uh, these large banks that would distribute it. And if you didn't have a, a relationship with them, you did not get funds. Um, and, and, and that, and we're seeing so many uh, small businesses within Latino and African-American communities uh, just are, are, are being shuttered, uh, shuttered um, day in, day out disproportionately. And so what we really want to do is be able to provide the opportunity, just like the way that uh, this group was able to take Robin Hood and actually democratize uh, a play within uh, GameStop, what we want to do is be able to, to actually take that sort of fervor, take that actual thought and to say, hey, listen, we want to invest in the best small businesses within our communities because this is not charity. You know, the, you know if you invest in these, uh, in, in these small businesses, you're going to get a return and you're going to be doing good. So this is not charity. This isn't a freebie. Uh, we'll do the evaluation and do the work, but at least give give people a chance to actually uh, give back to their communities uh, in so, a meaningful way. Sean, break this down for me. Of course, as you, you probably hear from my questions, I'm real a novice at this. <clears throat> but help me to understand this. I'm, my understanding is that your business goes public and then you can invest in the stock aspect. Small businesses are maybe not at that level yet, they, they're LLCs or whatever. So how does, that, how does that investment part work 
in that situation. Absolutely, absolutely. So what we're starting to see now, and that's a great question, Tori. Uh, what we're starting to see now is that the same way that we have funds that necessarily are investing in public companies. So when you invest in a mutual fund, you're invest, uh, and if that mutual fund says uh, we're investing in the Dow Jones, well, that mutual fund is investing in all of the public companies that are on the Dow Jones via a mutual fund. If you're doing it through an ETF, an exchange traded fund, uh, it's going to invest in all of those uh, those companies in the Dow Jones uh, index through the ETF. So what we're starting to see now through technology and actually through uh, just sheer want and desire is starting to see those small businesses who actually need funding to actually be put into a fund structure so that retail investors can start investing it, right? And so that is a surefire way to get capital directly into uh, into the hands of those who actually need it uh, the most. And then, you know, that's where you're actually able to uh, have retail investors be a part of it and to actually, uh, you know, uh, have a say within their own communities. Uh, this hasn't always been the case. This hasn't always been an option for us. And so it's really uh, it's really exciting to actually start to see this development happen on, on, on that type of scale. Man, that's absolutely beautiful, man. We appreciate you uh, for coming on the show and, and providing this information. If you all are listening, type one, type one in the comments section. If you um, have been edified and you are interested in, in figuring out this stock game and not only being able to improve your portfolio, but they're also helping to uplift and, and encourage and, uh, energize the, the our communities, the black and Latinx communities, uh, type one in the comment section. So, um, Sean, give us a closing statement about, you know, and make sure, of course, people know where they can come to access you uh, for more information and to be plugged in when the app is ready. It's coming out sometime in this month, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Our goal is to be uh, in the uh, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store on February the 15th. That is our goal. Uh, knock on wood. Pray for us. Uh, and uh, the best way to uh, keep in touch with us is to go to loopinvesting.com. Again, that's loopinvesting.com. Please sign up uh, for our wait list. Uh, we won't spam you. We would love to actually keep in touch to let you know uh, the latest and greatest with us. And matter of fact, if you are uh, much like me and always looking to you know shave off uh, a couple of unnecessary expenses here and there if you sign up right now we will actually send you out seven ways to to save money now um, we have a couple of tips in there because again the one thing about it is that this uh, we can't invest uh, for the future uh, if we're constantly just uh, overspending and, and not really taking into account uh, what what our, our our expenses are so everyone struggles with this but the one thing about it is that if we look at the wealth gap versus the income gap uh, between black and brown communities versus our white counterparts the gap between income um, it, it while it is pronounced it's not as nearly pronounced as the gap between uh, the, the wealth gap so the average household in our black and brown communities in terms of income is about sixty thousand dollars uh, versus our white counterparts, which is at $100,000. But if you look at the wealth gap, the 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 average wealth for a white household is $135,000 versus us, which is at $11,000. So that disparity shows you that, hey, it's not just an income problem. It's about, hey, what are you doing with the income that you actually make? And so that's what we want to do. We want to be able to empower people to make better choices with the money that they have. Uh, because every dollar that we that we get uh, is, is very important. Very, yeah, very important. Yeah, I just had to redo my budget and I was going through my bank statement and I was noticing stuff that was coming out of my account. And I was like, oh, my God, we don't pay attention to those small amounts. Um, so, of course, that Apple, they like to take money from our cards or these little apps. And I'm like, I don't use these apps. Let me cancel this stuff. $29, $18. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed um, Platinum Fitness mm -hmm. was still taken out of my account. And I canceled that two years ago. And I was just catching little things. I'm like, this is why it's important every month to just sit down, take a time, look at your bank statement, because they'll get you. 
Um, I also had um, yeah. another account that was taken out 178 and I've been, my contract was over with, I was done paying it and it was still taken out six months later. So yeah, we got to pay attention. And that budget made me sit down because I was starting a new business. I'm like, let me look at my budget. What can I save? And I end up saving $400 extra. Yeah, excellent awesome. point. Excellent point. That's yes, awesome. and you that's yeah. a great point about that the Apple, man. You you get deaf by a thousand cuts <laughs> with the with those Apple subscriptions because it's two dollars here, three dollars there, thirty dollars there. <laughs> two dollars, you know, and you're not really paying attention because it's it's small amounts. <laughs> but I'm add like, them up. No more. Let me take this off. Let me right, count. Right. We gotta do that every every now and then. Clean up those uh Apple subscriptions and Google Play subscriptions. They will get you. Yeah. They will. So, man, we appreciate you, Sean, for coming on. And um, is there any closing remarks? Yeah. I, the, the one thing I would say is that, listen, Rome, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, you know, from the standpoint of it's it's the little things that we kind of let slide in terms of these subscriptions and these little costs. You think about all of, you know, the, the, the costs here and there, you know, they start to add up. Right. They do. And you can find meaningful ways to actually cut down on your expenses and then take that money and put it to work. I'm not talking about just letting it sit in somebody's savings account and get mothballed where they're charging, giving you three or four cents and then taking your money in and, and create mortgages. Right. Uh, take that money and put it into the market and take that money to actually really grow that's when you're going to start to see a difference. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're, if it's $5 this month or if it's a hundred dollars, start with wherever you are and don't get discouraged. Uh, everyone had to start somewhere and, and let your somewhere be today. Don't put it off uh, another day. Absolutely. All right, beautiful. This is uh, Sean Ledry with the CEO of Loop Investing Technologies. Go to their website, Loop Investing Technologies, and get information about seven ways to save money and get plugged in for that app. And man, take them on. You see, if you if you heard what we heard today, you see the value in what he's offering. Then he that's your mentor right there to get into this stock game. Uh, we have a few people that you know know what they're doing, and obviously this brother is one of them. So make sure you and, and Sean, we got a lot of ones that that typed into the uh, into the comments section. So they look they're gonna be looking for you. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you. Before so you much. go, I mean, Sean, it's just a, it's a, what part of Rosen did yeah. you grow up? Like where block? Uh, yep, yep. So, so I credit. Uh, so I grew up on 131st and okay. Rose. The house is still there, and um, I credit. And, and I know Christy is going to kill me if I don't say this. I credit, uh, you know, being able to um, to 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 really link up with um, Salem uh, Baptist Church uh, on 118th right. in mm -hmm. Indiana. Um, I spent a lot of my years as a teenager, uh, you know, in, in Roseland. Uh, and again, even though my home was in Elgar Gardens, uh, you would find me uh, most likely on every Saturday, every Sunday, walking up and down Michigan. Same, same. Michigan was so. Michigan was our go to as kids on Saturdays because we would get allowance yes. and we would go to Michigan. And I was just telling my kids it was I mean, we we have fun in Roseland. It was. It was a village because if you walk past Miss Morehouse, Sarah House, you didn't speak, go get that switch off that tree. Um, <laughs> but we ran errands. But Saturday was like, we got up at seven. We can hit the streets. We'll go shopping. We'll go walking the train tracks, climbing trees. I mean, we have fun. Um, but when I go back to Roseland, I'm like, wow. I'm like, you know, looking at the houses, just sitting there. I'm like, they'll be, you know, flipping in their grades if they know their kids or grandkids didn't take up you know, take care of the property or didn't put the value or keep it and understanding the value of their homes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I do want to go back to Rosalind and kind of add, um, even in real estate piece, um, because the houses are going real cheap over there, 24, 26, 29. Um, and it's low because there's nothing there, but we can bring it back. Um, but yeah. There you go. Spot, and you're right. I remember getting on the green bus. Remember the green bus? The the <laughs> I used to love getting on that bus. <laughs> I remember those green buses. Oh yeah. So just imagine I was a little girl then, but the donut shop, go get my donuts, jump on the bus. And here we go downtown or we're traveling somewhere to find something new. But yeah. I miss yeah. Childhood was fun to roast. Yeah. But then you had your, your bad part, but we don't have to yeah. dwell on the bad part, but overall it was a good experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I love what you said, Linda, in terms of we can bring it back, right? And that that's the key takeaway from all the craziness with Reddit and GameStop that you had a group of strangers, all of them strangers, literally just said, we're going to buy in GameStop and we're going to do something against the hedge funds. Now, are they going to win? Are they going to be successful? Who knows, right? But they already made a statement saying, you know, when people come together and are unified to do a single thing, they usually are going to meet, they're going to have success. And so we shouldn't allow our communities to only be revitalized when Absolutely. gentrification takes place. And so if we can have that singular mindset that, hey, not this time with Rosalind, not this time with, uh, with, with Chatham, right? But if we actually put together um, our collective capital, there's no stopping us. And, and that's what we have to do. And uh, that's, that's what the goal is for, for what Loop Investing is about. Absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful. Sean, I want, as we, as, you, uh, as we close out with you, I want you to definitely um, check out Akbar Kurt Muhammad. He opened up a laundromat in the Woodlawn area. He has several laundromats, but he has a project at 611 East 67th Street. And uh, he pretty much bought the one side of the whole block and has some goals. He, he got with the uh, Cook County Land Bank. We're going to be talking about it a little bit more. But definitely, if you're talking about okay. uh, connecting with some entrepreneurs that are already on the ground, uh, creating a, a wonderful space. So, uh, and there's a few more. You got uh, Urban Juncture um, as, as well on 51st. Man, there's some great things happening. So we want to definitely, if you don't know about them already, plug you in with some entrepreneurs, some social entrepreneurs who are, you know, combining their, their economic uh, prowess with uh, revitalizing uh, our communities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be talking to you soon. Hey, once you come on the Tori Muhammad show with me, myself and Linda Perez, uh, you're family, man. So welcome to the family, and uh, you're welcome to come back at any time, man, to uh, share information with us and help us to navigate these stocks and these investments. And, and, and we have similar goals to help revitalize our communities. We can do it. Uh, we have the, the wherewithal, the tools. Matter of fact, there's another great company that is teaching and training, a black-owned company, teaching and training youth on uh, becoming uh, journeymen, trades journeymen. They don't have to go through, um, you know, the traditional routes that may be sometimes are more difficult for them to get access to, but they have some uh, a company right in, the, in, matter of fact, I believe they're in Roseland too, uh, where they're doing their training. So, man, shout out to all of you all uh, who have been doing mm -hmm. some amazing things. We appreciate you. And so, look, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come right back with more of the Tori Muhammad Show after a few seconds. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-N. Hey, Chicago, you know we've all been impacted by COVID, especially in our communities. Help protect Chicago. We need everyone to stay safe and get the facts about the COVID-19 vaccine. Visit the What's In It For The Black People media Facebook page and www.chicago.gov slash COVIDvax for the facts. Chicago's Power Hour. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. your host, Angie Mims, and Terrence Key, TD, <laughs> a.k.a. Terrence Daniels. I wish I had one witness in the house. You got one. You got, you got a couple of them. You got, you got, got two teams. Two teams. Give me a testimony. Oh, Lord. He's did it before. Oh, Lord. I got I one. Just, um, um, I got five reasons. Five reasons. Oh, Lord. He turned it around. <laughs> Turn it around. He woke me up he woke this me morning. He woke me up this morning. Oh, <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do this. Go number ahead. four. He woke me he up this morning. Me up this morning. <laughs> Come on, number three. Come. He woke me up. Oh, no. <laughs> he woke you up. That thing can touch you, but one you. of them fives will get you. What's the second one? He woke oh, me up this morning. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. And the number one reason. Number one. Final answer. He woke me up he this morning. Me up this he morning. woke me up this morning. That's a testimony. That's Return a testimony. <laughs>
back this is tori muhammad you've been listening to the tori muhammad show man we appreciate everybody uh who's been tuning in today we thank you we love you we appreciate you man the chats have been popping uh people want to get information about how to deal with ptsd how to deal how to use meditation and holistic health to deal with those issues that our community is facing and oftentimes the you know, when we talk about the economic struggles and the economic situations that we're having, when you start listening to successful people, when you start reading some of these books, How to Think, Think and Grow Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill, when you read uh, the uh, Master Keys, when you read um, uh, Dennis Kimbrough's uh, Think and Grow Rich, the, Rich, the Black Choice, oftentimes you'll find that these books talk about first before you can get financial wealth, that you have to deal with what's going on in between your two ears, right? Most of the times, what we are faced with is not an economic problem first. It's a spiritual and a mental problem. And if we can be able to meditate, if we can be able to control the thoughts, right? Thoughts are what produce things, right? In the beginning was the word, right? If you understand these principles, then you can be better off and many of us cannot envision the financial success that we want we cannot envision the us reaching our goals and how to uh snatch and obtain the goals that we have for ourselves so that's the problem but we get ready to close out uh today's show we just got a few more uh seconds here but i want to give some shout outs to our uh, sponsor usa asia online they are uh, doing some incredible things to make spaces, COVID space, uh, safe rather. So we appreciate uh, them for helping to make this show possible. And, of course, we have our supporters, our clients, who we always want to give some shout out to. I mean, you hear those McDonald's commercials. You hear the uh, Wendy's commercials. You hear the commercials so often and so much that they become part of our psyche. I have not ate a Big Mac since I was in high school, but I still can tell you how to make one. <laughs> That commercial has not been on, man. People don't even some people don't even remember that commercial, uh, but that commercial was was driven down into our psyche uh, that I probably will go to my death bear. I'll probably, you know, if I if I forget everything else, those commercials, some of those commercials, I still will remember because of the repetition, right? So shout out to Brown Sugar Bakery on Seventy Fifth Street, doing amazing stuff. Shout out to Sean Michelle's on Forty Six and Forty uh, Seventh and Wabash doing amazing things shout out to dan soul food and cafe on 79th and maplewood and creating and doing amazing things shout out to amaje motors and uh the people that we admire we love and we respect and also don't forget shout out to the foodie spot 74th and stony island i'm talking about some great food over there as well all the places i mentioned man you can do you can do something that will make your taste buds happy, that will make you feel so excited and so pleased and so happy with yourself. It's like an, a reward, man, that you've given yourself when you taste some of the delicious uh, delicacies and food from the people that I have just mentioned. And so I um, definitely want to shout out as I close out with uh, Akbar Kurt Muhammad. He's doing amazing things. He was able to snatch up some properties from the uh, Cook County Land Bank over there on 67th Street, like 600 East 71st uh, Street, and he has a vision of creating some amazing things over there. Uh, it's some holistic approaches where he's, they're talking about health care, financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and, um, and, and, of course, food, nutrition, and agriculture, which is part of really that health care component. But they are doing some amazing things. Him and his team is over there. And so we encourage you to man, to do some research. We're going to hopefully have him on the show real soon. The Salam Community Wellness Center is going to be the health care facility over there. And we're talking about right in Woodline, right in the community, right in the neighborhood. So kids, stay tuned for that. We'll be bringing you some more information on that. So as we close out, I want you all, brothers and sisters, man, to celebrate with me because I – 
am officially a licensed real estate broker. Man, I am so excited about this new aspect of this journey that I'll be taking to help people uh, with home ownership. And man, it was so, it was so um, interesting because, of course, you have to go through the course and study and learn so that you can pass the test. And then there are a few more things and steps you have to do to, you know, actually complete everything. And so I, I've just been, you know, like an energizer bunny, just, you know, doing what, what my, my, my mentor, my coach, my real estate instructor has been, te- instructor has been telling me to do. And uh, I called him after I completed some paperwork, and I called him back the next day, and I said, listen, I just, this may sound like a crazy question. Uh, but uh, uh, can I? Am I a licensed real estate broker now? And he started laughing. He said, "Man, you are locked and loaded." So I want you all to um, know, man, we're going to be here providing great. We, what we want to do is what we've always been doing: is inform, give you knowledge and information that will help you make informed decisions. That's what being soup time has been about: helping you to know uh, the, the uh, connect you to things and people and places that can help edify you and give you some options and some choices. Then, of course, Black Chicago Eats. It's about giving you some options options and choices, helping you to know what's out there. What are the possibilities in terms of Black-owned restaurants? And so we're going to continue in that line and be providing you with the information, with whatever new comes out from um, uh, uh, the, the government, with so and, and whatever programs that you may not know about, everything that we can do to inform and educate you. And don't don't get it twisted now. I'm coming. I'm brand new now. I'm brand new, but I'm not coming with myself to you. I got a squad, man. I got people. My in real estate uh, instructor, my sponsor and broker, man, he's been in real estate for us our 20 plus years. Right. And I got some other people, man, that have been doing this thing for a while. So if I don't know the answer because of my newness, I got a team. I got a squad where we're talking about everything from commercial to residential uh, investment opportunities. Man, we I I got you. I got you. And so I'm going to do the vetting for you and get the information to you when you need it. So just give me a call. Reach out to me. You know how to get me on Facebook, Instagram. Just just Google Tori Muhammad, and here I am. I'm right there. So with that, I want you all to know, brothers and sisters, that you. I want you to never forget that as long as I have a bowl of bean soup, you've got half. If you've been listening to the Tori Muhammad show, this is Tori Muhammad. Our co-host bounced off. I think, I don't know if she jumped off. She got kicked off. But she was here with us for the duration, the most, the, go get for the tough money. parts. She's gonna right. go hey, she had to go slaying some tacos, man, and, 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 and invest in some stocks. She probably already downloaded the app. She don't play. She is a fast-moving, quick-thinking person. So, uh, man, Sonia Escobar, we appreciate you. And uh, say that, Nopales? Nopales. Nopales, right, man. Nopales, Nopales. So with that, brothers and sisters, as long as I got a bowl of bean soup, you've got half. Peace. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-M.